Halloween. I love this time of year. You get to dress up, you get all the candy you can eat, and plenty of monster movies to watch on the television set. So to commemorate this night, we're gonna play two somewhat obscure monster NES games. First up, Monster in My Pocket, which was a pretty successful franchise for a while. It had its own cartoon, comic books, trading cards, and who could forget the toys? So it starts up and apparently you can choose between a vampire or the monster from Frankenstein. Let's go with the monster. This story is pathetic. From what I gather, there's this warlock who simply tells you that he sent out his henchmen while you were watching TV. Okay, sent them out to do what? This warlock guy never tells you what his plans are, where they're going, or what he wants from you in the first place. The main heroes, or monsters in this case, just simply take off as if they know where they're going. It feels like we're missing a huge amount of the cutscenes from the story. For all they know, he could be sending out his henchmen just to get matching Snuggies. I mean, I'll be honest, I've never seen this show, so as a newcomer, I can't help but wonder what this warlock guy would be after anyway. Clearly, you can see the scale of the monsters compared to everything else in the game. I have no choice but to assume they're in our world considering everything is so huge. And if that's the case, how threatening can you be when you're the size of a f***ing quarter? <coughs> <coughs> Holy franken f I can't breathe in that thing. <sighs> Much better. Alright, enough with the story. Let's just get to the game. Well, I can tell you the controls are pretty damn good. You can double jump and you can move pretty fluently. You have this short little tack, but it serves its purpose. Ah, uh, remember when it was considered cool to lug around a boombox? I always thought it would be way cooler if you could carry around a Nintendo for your tunes. Hey, what's up, motherfucker? Check this out, man. I got a new track this morning. You're gonna dig this, man. You're gonna dig this. Ready? Oh, yeah, man. Check out the pelvis action. Check out the pelvis. Yeah, pelvis make you go, oh, oh. Pelvis make you go, oh, oh. Well, I found a key. Can I pick it up? Yes, I can. Do I take it somewhere? Well, apparently I can throw it, which takes out the enemies better than my normal attack. Speaking of which, all of the enemies are basic monsters. You got zombies, hunchbacks, witches, skeletons, you know, the usual lineup. Yeah, I still have this key. I've been all over the level looking for some kind of door to open and I've found nothing. Oh, great, I just lost it. Now I'm fighting the first boss. And after beating him, I still move on to the next stage. So what was the point of carrying the key all over the place? Just to waste my- You done? I know the main attraction of the game is the idea that you're tiny and you're jumping on and around everyday objects. But wouldn't it be more enjoyable if you were actually interacting with the environment? Like maybe kick over the apple, turn on the faucet, throw food you find in the fridge, or maybe just break into Malibu Barbie's house and start sleeping with Ken's wife? Now that would be a great game, driving around in a pink Corvette and killing monsters. I mean, if you really stop and think about it, it's just a gimmicky background. They may as well just be basic platforms, and when you look at it that way, you have no power-ups. It's just the same attack over and over. It doesn't even matter if you choose the vampire either because it's the same attack with no variety. So if you get right down to it, this is a pretty basic game with not much to do. Not a bad game, but not a good one either. It's time for the main event, Monster Party. So apparently you're this kid who notices what he thinks is a star in the sky, which lands in front of him and turns out to be a monster from another world. The kid asks him who he is and the monster tells him his name is Bert. Not exactly a very threatening or imposing name, is it? I mean, what if Dracula's real name was Bob? Yeah, it doesn't exactly have the same effect, does it? And what's up with this kid? A monster just landed in front of him, he just acts like it's not a big deal. This has to be the most desensitized kid ever. If it were me, my poop would shit its pants. Well, Bert tells this kid that there's monsters on his planet and needs help fighting them and decided this kid with this bat was the route to go. Really? So there's a planet filled with monsters just like himself, mind you, and of all the threatening people on Earth, he chose to reveal himself to a kid with a stick? You know we have guns, right? Missiles, grenades, f***ing Dexter. And the funny thing is it gets weirder. The kid doesn't even say yes, and the monster just brings them along anyway and then tells them that they have to fuse together. 
Like seriously, what the hell am I playing? Is it just me or does it seem really, really wrong? It feels like we're one step away from a camp counselor going, Hey kid, I have candy, get in the van. Yeah, great title card. Got blood and crap everywhere. It's for kids, folks. All right, so I'm just gonna try out the controls. <laughs> what is that good for? You know, considering how the game started, that is quite a sight. Although I will admit it would actually be a pretty amazing talent to be able to propel yourself forward while humping the floor. Not going anywhere! This isn't working! Everything in this game is really weird. You have happy face blocks, Bruce Lee on fire, and look at this! Some guy's ass is just sticking out of the platform. Is he a good guy that I'm supposed to save? Nope, he hurts you if you touch him. So the asses sticking out of the platforms are just there for me to hit? Think that's weird? Well, right before you beat up on the first pair of defenseless ass cheeks, there's this door and if you go inside, there's a plant that says hello baby and start shooting bubbles at you. This is where you learn you can use your bat to hit things back at the enemies. But this plant takes so many hits to kill doing this that you'll more than likely kill your thumb before you ever move on. Okay, so I got a question mark. What did that do? A couple bad guys later, I found another door, so I started thinking I had to fight another boss, but guess what? This one's empty. One, why does it bother telling you the obvious? And two, why bother having an empty room in the game? Oh, but it doesn't stop there. Once again, I kill a couple more bad guys and yet another door. I go inside and there's a spider and he's dead. Or I guess he wasn't dead just yet. Apparently it was considerate enough to save his last breath just to tell me what would happen two seconds from now. And the level of strange has still not reached its maximum potential because I walked away from the door and then this happened. What in Bugs Bunny's bushy ass just happened? Look at all this evil twisted crap! Again, for kids! So I started thinking, why waste my time? So I decided to skip the rest of the doors and just try to make it to the end of the level, which I did. And I found this one door that I can't seem to go in. What the hell? Then I noticed there's a little box at the bottom that says key. Well, obviously I need a key, which means I have to go in every single door until I find it. So I head all the way back and go through any of the doors that I think I might have missed. And on the way, I killed this skinless dog that dropped the pill on the ground. I grabbed the pill and then I turned into Bert, which makes me more powerful. I can fly and now I have the ability to shoot things. So remember kids, swallow crap you find on the floor. Anyway, I finally find one of the doors I hadn't gone in only to be greeted by a pumpkin headed guy who begs you not to pick on him, which if you end the dialogue box, he tries to kill you anyhow. You beat him, he gives you the key and now you can go through that door. The real question is, do you really want to? Because if you do, the weird crap keeps on coming. I mean, look at this stuff. What is that, a fish head with fingers for legs? You, of course, get your continued share of empty rooms, but then check this one out. What am I fighting? A shrimp? Now an onion ring? And of course, now it's a kebab. The last boss for the level gives you the key, and it's the most obvious boss of them all. You fight a wishing well that shoots dinner plates at you. Why are you shocked? Getting into the third stage, the first thing I notice is I'm pink now. Why? Did Bert undress me? Other than that, more empty rooms, a guy who tells you his legs are asleep before attacking you, and killer bat umbrellas. Moving on. Fourth stage, rocks that don't die, empty rooms, a guy that tells you he's a slow poke, and a kitty cat in a box. Next. For the fifth stage, I found an anomaly in gaming. A boss that asked me to watch his dance. So naturally, when the dialogue box disappeared, I expected him to attack me. He didn't. In fact, every time I hit these two guys, they would just keep popping back up and they will never die. Now, before I continue, everybody has their own opinion on what the easiest boss in a video game is. Most commonly, people usually pick Dracula from Castlevania Simon's Quest, where you simply have to hit him with fire and it prevents Dracula from even touching you. You can all shut up now, because I found the easiest boss in existence. 
You simply stand still while they dance and then they die. Half bit wins. Stage six sucks. It's a maze of doors and trust me, it sucks. Nothing ticked me off as much as the final stage. I went through every door and beat every boss only to end up at the last door and still not have it open. What did I miss? I did everything. Then I noticed from the start point I can actually walk to the left and you'll find another door. Now that doesn't seem like a big deal, but none of the other levels work like that so it was easy to miss. The worst part was this is easily the hardest boss in the game and it drains your health easier than anything else. So when you do manage to beat him, the best thing you can do for yourself is to continue killing these dynamite sticks floating on clouds until they give you hearts that replenish your health. Once you're filled up enough, then continue with the rest of the level and you'll finally get the key that opens that damn door. You know, considering how strange everything is in this game, I wonder what the final boss is going to be. Maybe a two-headed Lindsay Lohan surviving on the soul of Jimmy Hoffa that shoots out used needles. Oh, it's just a big fat face. So after you beat the game, Bert gives you a box with a hooker inside. She turns into a monster and you wake up because it was all just a dream. That is until you open the door to leave for school and find Bert who whispers creepy sh** into your ear. The end. I don't even know what to say. I've played some weird games in my day. Happy Halloween.